If you were alive on September 11th, 2001, you likely remember where you were that day and the moment when you heard what had happened. For some Oregonians, their connection to that tragic day runs even deeper. Galen Etlin has the stories of some who were actually there 20 years ago and how one who wasn't is trying to help all these years later. Jeff Gamble of Portland moved to New York in the mid 90s as a graphic designer. On the morning of September 11th, 2001, he arrived early to work at Madison Square Garden. You could also see right out the window of our office, the towers downtown. He could see smoke from what he thought was an accidental plane crash into the North Tower. But then a second plane hit the South. What was that like in those moments? It just felt like we had reached a, a moment where everything was going to change. He knew he was witnessing history as many ran the other way. I quickly bought a disposable camera at a pharmacy and you know, started heading downtown. He took photos showing a crowd around an old TV set watching the towers and of a bigger crowd trying to pack into a train station to get away. Literally looked like downtown Manhattan had just blown up. Jeff's roommate, Beaverton native Jason Baston, could not find Jeff at Madison Square Garden so jumped on a train back to their home in Jersey City right before transportation shut down. The train went really slow on the, the trip, but it didn't stop at any of the stations. And each platform had a number of people and people were yelling at the train. I remember people trying to grab the train. Laura Styler of Corvallis was a model in New York for Fashion Week. She watched from Jersey City across the water as the towers burned. There were people hanging out of the buildings uh, where the building smoke was, and uh, we realized that they were jumping. And uh, we were just sobbing. You never in a million years could have convinced me that the towers would eventually collapse. And as the first building gave way, Laura, watching from across the water, thought of everyone below. It was excruciatingly painful to not be able to warn them. At that point, Jeff was 10 blocks away from the World Trade Center and saw the first tower fall, soon followed by the second. There was this realization that you had just seen a lot of people die. For months, responders dug through burning wreckage and removed tons of debris and metal. Very humbling, and then I actually was handed the steel in person. Alex Horn crafts knives in Portland. An anonymous donor gave him an elevator shaft bearing from the World Trade Center wreckage and commissioned two special knives made from the metal. Very poignant experience. The knives are being sold and raffled off. Proceeds will go to Tuesday's Children Foundation, which helps families impacted by events like 9-11. What does it mean to you to do a project like this? You just know, like, I'm never going to get the chance to have something this important again. For Oregonians on the ground during 9-11, the hours, days, and weeks after were important too. Looking back now at what happened then, yep. what is your takeaway? That there was this sense of we're all in this together and life is really, really valuable and there's nothing guaranteed. Jeff still lives in Jersey City, now married, and he visits Ground Zero every year, including on this 20-year mark. I think about the 2,753 people who died on that spot that day. I don't take for granted the fact that 20 years later, I've, I'm still here. His final snapshot shows the setting sun's glow over a devastated, smoky skyline. But with it, he carries this lesson. Grab the people that, that you care about and hold them close. Galen Etlin, KGW News.